Welcome back everyone. Starting this video, we are going to learn about the biggest feature addition to Vue 3, which is the Composition API. There's quite a bit to learn, so here's how we are going to proceed. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to the Composition API. We will talk about the what and the why. Over the next couple of videos, we will understand the how. Let's begin. What exactly is the Composition API? In the simplest terms, the Composition API is a feature in Vue 3 which gives us another way to write our components. More specifically, another way to write the script block in a component. So far, what we've learned is the Options API to build components. So data, computed properties, methods, watchers and lifecycle hooks. They all are options that we can configure in a view component. So what we have learned so far is using the options API, which is one way to build components in Vue. The other way is to use the composition API. When creating components, you can choose either of the two options. So what we've learned so far is still valid. In fact, Having a knowledge of what we've learned so far makes the process of understanding the Composition API easier. And you'll probably agree with that statement as we learn more in the following videos. All right, we now know what the Composition API is. It's just another way to write a component in Vue. Let's now understand why was there a need for it? Or why was there a need for another way to build components in Vue. Now there were two main reasons. The first one is that Vue projects became hard to manage as they grew in size and complexity. With the Options API, components are organized using options such as data, computed properties, methods, created, mounted, and so on. Because of this, logic isn't really grouped by feature which can make it hard to read through a large and complex component file. As a developer, you would often have to scroll back and forth to understand what's going on with a particular feature. Usually, a change to feature also implied you having to change code across multiple options. From a developer experience point of view, this is definitely not the best case scenario. It's not bad, but it could be better. The second reason, which is also because a feature is split up inside a component, is that reusing logic across components became difficult. In Vue 2, and thereby in Vue 3, we do have mixins for sharing logic across components, but they do have their drawbacks. So as an answer to these problems, the Composition API was introduced in Vue 3. Addressing both the problems, we can say that the Composition API allows us to encapsulate one piece of functionality so that you can use it in different components throughout the application. If this is still a bit confusing, please don't worry. It'll start to make sense when we understand how to write components with the Composition API. I find the best way to understand the Composition API is to simply revisit the Options API and start replacing them with the Composition API. That will provide a context to what exactly we are learning and at the same time helps you compare the two approaches. So in the upcoming videos, let's learn how to replace data, computed properties, methods, watchers, and the other option APIs with the Composition API. I'll see you guys in the next video.